So let's go and talk about what it is you need to know about the parabola in conic sections. And I emphasize in conic sections because our parabola could definitely be vertical, like the quadratic equation, or it could now be horizontal. So let's go and discuss a little bit about this, these new formulas that we have, this new letter that I have, and understand well, what is it that makes a parabola and how can we identify all these new parts that supposedly were always there but we maybe never previously discussed until it came into conic sections. All right, so the first thing you might recognize is this H and this K. And if the H and the K are familiar to you, that probably means you're familiar with vertex form of a quadratic equation, which represented the parabola on the graph, right? Well, that's the same thing we're going to have here. When we recognize here the H and the K, yes, guess what? That is going to be your vertex. Now, it's important for you to recognize that if a parabola opens up or down or left and right is going to be based on what variable is going to be squared. So I look over here and I recognize my x minus h, this binomial squared, is what would be expanded. So this is going to produce a x squared. Now, if I think of quadratic equations, right, standard form or vertex form, the x was squared. That means my parabola could open up or down. Now, in this example over here, if I was to expand this binomial, the y minus k squared, that would give me a y squared. And that's actually going to give me an opening to the left or to the right, which would not be a function. So that's why we didn't study it for quadratic functions. But it is still going to follow the same definition of a parabola, which I'll explain in just a second. So now that we have the vertex on the way, let's go ahead and do a quick little sketch to kind of understand and remember what it is that makes up a parabola. Let's go and get a quick sketch of a parabola. Now this is obviously a parabola that is going to be opening up. And you can say here is going to be my h comma k. Now, when you remember from a parabola, we have like the end behavior, right? It's going up and up. And the other thing besides the vertex, another thing we talked about a lot about was this axis of symmetry. But if you want to think about the formal definition of actually what makes up a parabola, if it's vertical or if it's going to be a horizontal, is going to be this definition that every point that makes up this parabola is going to be equal distance from a point inside of the parabola as well as to this line, this imaginary line that's not on the graph but is perpendicular to the axis of symmetry. Now, this dot up here in the inside of the parabola is what we call our focus. All right, And this horizontal line that we have here is just going to be what we call the directories. Now, those are something new that we did not discuss in quadratic equations. We only discussed the axis of symmetry and the vertex. So how do we find this focus in the directrix? Well, if you're thinking about it, you're right. It's this value p. P represents the distance and the direction from my vertex to my focus. So this distance right here is going to be P. Now, if I want to go to my directrix, I'm just going to do the opposite direction. They're the same distance. It's just going to be in the opposite direction. So this is going to be negative P, okay, or opposite of P. Because it's not always going to be negative. Because yes, a quadratic can open up or a quadratic can open down. So if the value of p is negative, it's going to open down. If you remember for quadratic equations, when a was negative, the parabola opened down. When a was positive, it opened up. That's the same thing, but now we're going to be dealing with p. But again, just remember, p represents the distance and the direction from our vertex to our focus. And if we want to find the directrix, we're just going to go the opposite direction, but the same distance. Now let's just go ahead and label down. We got the vertex, that's hk. Let's go and identify how we can identify my focus and my directrix once we know what p is and h and k. So when we have a vertical parabola, notice that my p is going up and down from my vertex. So if I want to find the focus, I'm going to keep my x coordinate the same, and all I'm going to do is say k plus or minus p. Now if I want to find my directrix, notice that the directrix is a horizontal line, cut perpendicular to my axis of symmetry. But it's a line, it's not a point. So therefore my directrix I'm going to write as a horizontal line, so that'd be y equals k minus p. And the reason why I'm using p minus p is because it's the opposite of the value p. So if your p is positive, your directrix is going to go in the negative direction. If your p was negative, your directrix would be up in the positive direction. So this is what it looks like for a vertical parabola. Let's go and investigate now. Well, what about if my parabola is turned to its side? What about if it has an opening that is going either to the right or to the left? Well, again, the same thing is going to work. Here is going to be my vertex, which is h comma k. Notice that h is always with x, no matter if it's a vertical or a horizontal parabola. And k is always with y. So the only thing that's really changed is my y is squared here compared to my x being squared. My parabola always opens up towards my focus. 
and my directrix is always going to be perpendicular to the axis of symmetry. So that, that would look something like here. The difference here that we have is that my now my directrix is a vertical line. So rather than equaling a y equals, that will be an x equals. And my focus here is going to be to the right or to the left. So rather than adding p to the y coordinate of my vertex, I'm going to add p to the x coordinate of my vertex. So if I want to find my focus here, I'm going to simply just take h plus or minus p. Because again, p represents the distance and the directions from the vertex as well to the focus. And then that's going to be common k. To find my directrix, all I'm simply going to do is write the same equation, but now it's going to be a x equals h minus p. Now, there's two other things that we can talk about. If some more definitions that we deal with, this p value p is also what we call the focal length. If we're talking about this length, so this is called the focal length, and the distance from this point that goes through the focus, that's what we call our focal width. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's about everything you're going to need to know for a parabola in conic sections. Now, if you're interested to learn everything you need to know for the ellipse, as well as the hyperbola, go ahead and check out my playlist right here that I have in my card, where I'll go through the exact same type of information, but for those conics. If you're excited to go and get started doing some problems on identifying the parts or writing the equations, go ahead and check out these two videos, where I will show you step by step how to get started. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.